Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel on this rather warm Friday in Adelaide. We've had uh, temperatures over the 30s most of this week, and it's continuing next week, I think. So it's quite warm, but I've got a nice air conditioner going in here, so it's quite good, quite cool. Um, do you really need a new camera? Do you really need a new computer? That's the question I'm posing today, and I'll let you come to your own conclusions afterwards. Probably won't make any difference to what you buy and what you look at and what you desire. But um, it keeps coming back to me that all the time we are, and I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone else, we're all being lured into new technology all the time. Um, I was in Ted's cameras the other day, our local, one of our Adelaide um, local and Australian retailers, and they're always got sales and, uh, well, not always got sales, but they've got wonderful cameras and things advertised uh, with a stock taking sale on at the moment. Sometimes I buy second hand in there and sometimes I've bought new cameras in there and they're a, a good retail store. There's a few of them still around in, in Adelaide and I enjoy um, new technology like everyone else. But do we really need the new technology? Um, here's a Australian camera handbook and this is telling us the best buys for 2023. But what's wrong with the camera you've already got? Um, another one here, I get a friend of mine sent me some subscriptions to these and she's still paying for it. I don't have to tell her to stop it, but they're beautiful magazines. And uh, I'll come over there a bit. So photo review, beautiful, big, glossy magazines, lots of great reviews and articles about photography in them. And um, this one is a uh, December to February 2022, it says. And um, some wonderful stuff in there. And they've always got advertisements for, well, not, not lots of them, but advertisements for the cameras that we see in here. That's the OM1, the Olympus system there. And um, the, there's another one. Of the, uh, and so I'm getting these. These only come out quarterly, but they're a nice glossy magazine. And uh, I do like them. Incidentally, I'll talk a little bit about the Micro Four Thirds system in a minute, which I've become quite keen on. Um, so, why do we need a new camera? When I look at all the photos I've taken over the years on various cameras, both film and digital, um, there's not a real big difference in the results. And um, I'll just go through some of the cameras that I've used. And I, I used to, I started off doing weddings in 1975. So I've had a, a number of cameras that have followed me through on that, that wedding photography career. And uh, that's interesting to see that um, uh, what I used and what I could still use to photograph a wedding. Um, the uh, the first one I use, I've got a few cameras back here and you'll see there's an old um, uh, Apple G3 uh, computer back there. I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute too. But so we come around here and uh, I think I've talked about this camera on, on here before, but the very first camera I used to photograph weddings was the Pentax Spotmatic. And uh, I first became aware of this camera when I still only had a, <coughs> a Yashica rangefinder camera um, and uh, a Minister D it was. And I was cutting my teeth on that, learning about photography. But then a young friend of my sister, now sister-in-law, uh, he was out taking some photos one day up in the Riverland and he had one of these. And he let me look through the viewfinder um, and uh, looking out through the lens. And I was amazed at, uh, at what I saw. And I thought, wow, this is pretty. And I saw some of his photos that he'd taken afterwards. And I thought, that's the coming thing. I need to get into a, a film SLR. He told me a little bit about it. And so I started taking off taking weddings in 1975 with this very camera. I had a, I think it was an SP500, Pentax SP500 as a backup camera, which belonged to my mum, which my dad had bought her. And uh, my, my claim is I could still photograph a wedding with this camera. And I got some very nice results back then, but I progressed through a number of cameras. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing if anyone still thinks that they could photograph a wedding using one of these, or if they already have, or if there are photographers out there who are actually um, uh, doing film weddings exclusively. I know some offer uh, film weddings as an extra, film shots as an extra to their digital shots, but I wonder if anyone's just exclusively using film these days. I'd be interested to hear about that. So that was the Pentax Spotmatic. And I've got a whole lot of lens that go with that. That was the old screw system. 
and then I progressed through the years. Um, I ended up getting the, um, uh, I used a Pentax Super A and I used the Pentax SFXN. I ended up the last film camera I was using to photograph weddings was the um, Pentax MZS, which I still have. And I've, I've done reviews of some of these cameras on my channel. Maybe I'll put a link on underneath afterwards. But I've bought a number of cameras over the years. Mostly I kept upgrading uh, to something a little bit better to do my weddings within the film area. When digital came in, I got the first Pentax IST TD, uh, which IST D, I think it was, with the asterisk, strange sort of a title for a camera. And I photographed my first digital uh, shots on a wedding with that. And I used that alongside a film camera for a while until I got used to um, uh, doing digital only and, and, and letting go of film. And then I progressed from that, um, that one to a uh, digital camera, which was, uh, I, I, I actually swapped over uh, before I got some later Pentax digital cameras to the Canon 400D, mainly because my Pentax was in disrepair and I needed a new camera urgently because I was photographing a wedding interstate. So I gravitated over to the Canon 400D. And ever since that time, I've been um, alternating between Canons and Pentax and then a few other brands. Of course, when you on the second hand market is so good these days, there are so many cameras around and I've got a whole range of them. I graduated from, well, I didn't graduate, but I started getting a few other cameras that were really bargains I couldn't pass up and, and lenses that go with them, like Nikon's uh, digital cameras. And uh, for instance, I've got here somewhere, where are we? Let's have a look. Here's a Nikon. This one here is a uh, Nikon D5200. And the lenses on these are beautiful. They have stabilized lenses. And there's a beautiful big um, telephoto lens that goes with that. This one here, uh, which is uh, the uh, vibration reduction they have. This one here is a 55 to 300 zoom lens. And these lenses are fantastic. And I've taken a number of photos with these cameras. This one here has a flip out screen, which I consider essential these days for digital cameras. You should have a flip out screen. And uh, fantastic system. I've got about three or four four I think uh, pen, uh, sorry digital Nikon digital cameras and a number of film cameras that I've bought since cameras that because I was so cheap and I had would have liked them in the old days when I was using my pen taxes uh, um, uh, to have bought them but they were always a little bit out of my league but now I've got a collection of, of Nikon film cameras as well and also I had other cameras like the Minolta 9000 when I was doing film weddings was a good backup camera that I used as well. That was the first autofocus uh, professional film camera that came out from my recollection. And that was a good camera, but I didn't use it exclusively for doing weddings. So I used it as a backup. So over the years, I've graduated with cameras. I bought new ones. I bought secondhand ones. And then you get these magazines that are pushing all the latest technology, the latest things. Just lately, I've gravitated to the um, the Micro Four Third system, which I'm really enjoying. The um, Olympus OM-D EM5 Mark II, and there's later versions of this, of course, but I love this little camera and I've got some lenses with it. And then from my son, I bought, uh, he had a couple of Panasonic Lumixes and uh, he was selling them and I thought, well, I'll buy them off you and the Micro Four Third system. So lately I've become very much in love with the Micro Four Thirds system because it's such a versatile little system, mirrorless cameras. I'd never gone mirrorless before. And um, I love these little cameras and these are fast becoming my main go-to camera. In fact, I was away on a holiday just recently and I took my Canon camera and I wished I had have taken my little Olympus because I did a lot of video and the Canon uh, 700D that I was using doesn't have image stabilization uh, when you're doing video handheld, whereas this has got five axis image stabilization and doing video with these is fantastic. And uh, they you, the the magnification factor, two times magnification capture, capture uh, uh, factor is really a great too for getting in close ups of um, birds and animals and things and whatever. So my argument is that I look at a lot of um, 
people's wedding photography because I still follow wedding photography because I'm a keen wedding photographer. By the way, just an aside, when you're a retired wedding photographer, one of the worst things that happens is that you have dreams sometimes that become nightmares where you are doing a wedding and you have forgotten to charge your batteries, you've left the film home, you've left the camera home, all that sort of stuff, and it becomes quite stressful. Um, so I don't know whether any of you current wedding photographers have that experience, but uh, shooting weddings, you can be quite tense, of course, and my wife used to get very um, upset with me because in the couple of days leading up to photographing a wedding, uh, I was quite tense. Uh, but once once I and once I went through all that preparation procedure and working everything out in my head and checking all my equipment on the day of the wedding, it was just like riding a bike. I'd go in. Well, not so much. You still got to be on your toes. But but, you know, the, the the preparation part and the tension of getting ready for a wedding is pretty strong. But I always say to people, if you are doing wedding photography, you don't feel that tension before you do a wedding. You're not taking the the, the, the shoot seriously enough. It's keeping you on your toes. So. Where am I up to now? So I look at wedding photography that's on the internet by young people, young guns, both in Australia and overseas. And uh, some of it's fairly good, I think. And people have certainly got the idea of how to do it, how to capture it, the candid moments and the posed moments and whatever. I do, I'm a little bit critical of the fact that not too many of them know how to use fill flash or bounce flash off the ceiling and that sort of thing. But generally speaking, they're doing a good job. But when I look at it and I look back on my photos taken on all these older cameras that I've got here, I, I think how, how really, how much better are those shots than what I took? Um, just thought I heard the door go there. Someone might be coming in. It could be my son. Anyway, I'll come back and cut that bit out. So I wonder how much better do you get out of this modern technology than what you got out of the old cameras, the system of cameras that I've used down through the years. And, um, you know, I've used the the, the uh, 700D, the 600D Canon, Pentax KR, Pentax KX. I haven't gone much deeper than that into those brands, really. I've just stuck with those because they're good cameras and I've got some good lenses that go with them. And I like the flash system for the Canon cameras. It's beautiful, those little uh, uh, flashes that sit on top of your camera. And uh, so I wonder why we have to keep buying new cameras. I know we're always striving to be better, but looking back, how, how much more technology do you need to cram into a camera to get better results than you did in the past? And would your customers really notice if you did a camera, uh, did a, a wedding using a, an older camera and turned up some really good work? It's after all, it's what you, uh, what you bring to the page as a, photographer your abilities not the camera so much and your ability to work at a wedding and to have a timetable worked out and how to capture all the things that need to be captured it's quite a big job and and i just wonder whether your customers would ever notice if you had an older camera or a newer camera it might be a good thing to use in your advertising but frankly speaking i think it's a bit of overkill and of course these manufacturers have to keep um, getting us to buy new cameras so they can stay in business. But now there are so many on new ones on the, the market, our old ones on the market now that are so good that you wonder just where it's all headed. And with computers, it's the same. You look at that um, big, um, I'll point over there. I think you can see it over there now, that, that big um, uh, Apple Mac G3 power uh, computer I've got there. It's pretty, it, it still works. One day I'll probably, um, I'll hook it up and and show you on that screen in the background there. Uh, I'm pointing over there, that screen in the background there, um, how it actually works and what the operating system looks like. That had operating system OS 9 on that to start with and then, then OS 10 came along and that was uh, loaded on there. And uh, you can now, if you turn that on, you can actually alternate and go back to the old operating system nine and interchange between the two and have a look at what it looked like. Fairly useless um, uh, by today's standards in some ways because there are no USB ports and things like that. We used to have in here, you can see over in here, that was the little um, disc, what are they called? I've got a whole lot of them right here. I'll put that down afterwards. I can't remember what they're called now. But these little discs used to go in here uh, to 
uh, instead of a, a, a CD, which came in later on, or a hard drive, you could save what you did on these little um, uh, discs that used to go in there, a little bit bigger size than the, uh, what were they called? It'll come back to me. Anyway, zip discs, I think they're called. And uh, you could save some of your, and you can still get adapters to plug those things into the side of your laptop, and they work. But um, with laptops, the um, I've got lots of them, or I've, I've, I've stuck with the, the Apple computers all the way through. I've never been a PC fan, and I've stayed with Apple right since since the word go, pretty much. But the the problem is that they keep changing the software, and after a while, you can't keep doing things that they are now offering on on a um, uh, a laptop that you had in the old days. But the problem I have is that a lot of my older laptops have got stuff on there that I haven't really backed up onto a, a hard drive and therefore I don't chuck them out I do replace them occasionally not usually with a new one I don't think I've ever bought a, a new um, uh, MacBook or whatever since the days I bought that brand new and that cost a, a fortune to buy that originally and, and the one before that was even a lot more uh, $6,000 the one before that which only had floppy disks <laughs> so in, in effect prices of computers have actually gone down and, and the the, the uh, things you can do with them are a whole lot better. So to a point, to a certain point, you are locked into buying a new um, computer if you want to have all the latest and the greatest. Uh, but by the same token, don't throw out your old ones. That's my opinion, because there's lots of good information on them. And I've still got a lot of stuff on them. In fact, one of my laptops, where is it? Which I've got here somewhere. I should try and find it for you, just to show you. What do I do with it now? Ah, uh, here. Put that there. Now, in here, I think I've got this one here. Now back, now back a few years ago, this was a MacBook Pro, and um, the black one, you don't get too many black ones around the place. There you go. And uh, well, it doesn't say MacBook Pro, but I used this extensively for, for quite some years. And then the screen went dead on me. When you turn this on, you can still see a little bit of the screen in the background. But when I plug it into that, um, uh, monitor behind I can actually see all of this the only problem was and I've got a lot of stuff on here that I really want to use and still do things with um, but the problem is a little while back um, not only was the screen dead uh, but then the battery seized up now I've got a new one of these on order and um, that should be arrived within the next couple of days and one of my 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 wife's brother-in-law tells me that, and I took that one out of here, tells me that I can just plug a new one in and I should be able to get this going again. So I'm quite excited about that when I get that. But uh, I've got a number of, I've even got a couple of older laptops than this one, but they've all got stuff on them that I don't want to lose. And um, so to a certain extent, um, you do have to get, a new computer from time to time to upgrade to the latest operating software because these ones, the latest things won't work on them, but there's still lots of interesting uh, information on there that I've got and I can still use the programs that are loaded there, uh, which is good. So come back to my question. Do you think you really need a new camera or can you make do with what you've got? Are your customers really going to notice the difference between the different cameras you take? After all, it's really your skill. What do you think? And what about your computers? Uh, is it so necessary to get the latest and greatest computer? I've, I've been toying with it just lately to get a new computer altogether because I do a lot of um, presentations in church services using PowerPoint and things like that. And I'm using an, an older computer and every now and then I think this computer is going to die on me. Maybe I need to get a better one. But while it's still working, <laughs> I'm not going to get a better one. So there you go, just posing some questions for you today. Oh, I mean, I'll, this, this one back here I'm pointing to here, now this one here, I will show you 
I could go through all these other cameras, but I won't today. But um, one of the things that, that is interesting about this is that you've got a drop down side on these. So you just pull this here and there you go. Look at that. You can see all inside the camera, uh, sorry, inside the computer, replace parts and components. And that was one of the draw cards of this particular um, computer. And uh, so I promise you one day, not too far off, while I've still got it sitting there, I've got all the connections. I did hook it up a couple of years ago to see if it still worked, and it does still work. So I'll show you that one day. And uh, there are other YouTube videos people have done showing you how these things work, and uh, they're really quite quite interesting. Someone's got a lawnmower or something going out there. You might hear some of that in the background. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Just a little bit of a walk back in memory lane for me, and uh, just sort of musing over the fact, do we really need these new ca new cameras and things that they're pushing all the time, or even the older secondhand ones that are at such good prices? We all have this problem with gas, don't we? Um, gear acquisition syndrome. And uh, I'm resisting, trying to resist all the time to buy new cameras and things. In fact, a friend of mine's got a whole lot of stuff that he told me he wanted to sell just recently, which are some very attractive items amongst his list, but uh, I'm not so sure he wants to sell it now. But we'll see what happens. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. Just a bit of a rant today. Um, so thanks for watching. Like if you like. Subscribe if you wish. And I'll see you next time. And uh, over and out. Enjoy your weekend.